a small stone a of mass 3m is attached to one end of a string we can see that in the diagram a small stone b of mass m is attached to the other end of the string and a is held at rest on a fixed rough plane so it's rough we've got friction the plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle alpha where tan alpha is three quarters we can see this on the diagram tan alpha is three quarters that means we can work out cos alpha and sine alpha which we will need so if we have a right angle triangle with the angle alpha here tan alpha is three quarters and tan is the opposite over the adjacent so the opposite is three the adjacent is four and it's a three four five triangle that means the hypotenuse is five we can use pythagoras's theorem or just recognize the three four five triangle so that means we can write down cos alpha, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and sine alpha, which is opposite over hypotenuse. A string passes over the pulley P, fixed at the top of the plane. Again, all on the diagram. The part of the string from A to P is parallel to the line of greatest slope. Stone B hangs freely. The coefficient of friction, so mu, is 1 6. Stone A is released from rest and begins to move down the plane. So it's moving in this direction. The stones are modeled as particles. The pulley is modeled as smooth and small. And the string is modeled as light and inextensible. Using the model, for the motion of the system before b reaches the pulley write down an equation of motion for a so before we start let's draw on all of the forces so the weight of a the weight is mass times gravity mass is 3m so it's 3mg for b mg we put the tension in the string which is resisting the motion of a and pulling b up we've got the normal reaction which is perpendicular to the plane and we've also got friction and friction is opposing the motion so it's going to go in this direction and it's taking its maximum value because it's moving friction takes its maximum value which is mu r or one six times r so part a write down an equation of motion for a the equation of motion is f equals ma so it's f equals m a the force is going for the motion for the in the direction of travel is just part of the 3mg force so this is angle alpha in here. So going down will be cos alpha. So in the direction of travel is sine. So 3mg sine alpha. So that's in the direction of travel. Then opposing the motion is friction and tension. So minus T minus mu R equals MA mass is 3M times A. That is an equation of motion for A. That's all we need for part A. But we're going to need to carry on working for to work out part B, which is show that the acceleration of A is one tenth G. So we're going to have to carry on working. So we can change sine alpha into three fifths. So we'll have three fifths times three, which will be nine fifths. So nine fifths mg minus 
the tension minus mu r. Mu is 1 6, so 1 6 of r, and that equals 3 m a. We can work out what r is by resolving perpendicular to the plane. So the forces up equal the forces down. Perpendicular to the plane. So the forces up, that's R, and that is equal to the forces down, 3mg cos alpha. So R is equal to 3mg cos alpha, and we can change cos alpha into 4 fifths. So 3 times 4 fifths will be 12 fifths. So R is 12 fifths mg. So now we have, let's just box that off. So we have 9 fifths mg. Minus T minus a sixth of R. A sixth of 12 fifths mg. And that is equal to 3MA. We can simplify this. So 9 fifths mg. So 9 fifths mg minus a sixth times 12 fifths mg. is 7 fifths, so we've just got 7 fifths mg minus t equals 3ma. That's as far as we can go with this, but we can do an equation of motion for b as well. So an equation of motion for b will be the force equals ma again. So for b, again f equals ma, So we've got T going with the motion, Mg opposing it, so T minus Mg is the resultant force, T minus Mg, and the mass is M, so that equals Ma. So the tension, we're going to say is the same for both A and B. The acceleration is the same for A and B as well, so we can just substitute in, so tension is equal to ma plus mg. So tension is ma plus mg, so we can substitute that in to our equation for a. So back to the equation for a. So we have 7 fifths mg minus Tension, which is Ma plus Mg, equals 3Ma. So 7 fifths Mg minus Ma minus Mg. This is minus both of them. It's like expanding a bracket with a minus 1. Equals 3Ma. We've got 7 fifths Mg. Take away 1Mg. So let's be 2 fifths mg minus ma equals 3 ma plus an ma to both sides. So 2 fifths mg equals 4 ma. Divide through by m, so that disappears. And then divide both sides by 4. So that will give us 2 fifths divided by 4 which is the one-tenth we wanted. So one-tenth g is the acceleration. Sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of b from the instant when a is released from rest to the instant before b reaches the pulley. Explain your answer. So the acceleration is 
but it starts from rest it starts with no velocity and then it moves for constant acceleration so it starts at zero and then moves at a constant acceleration that'd be a constant gradient so it's velocity against time so velocity in meters per second time in seconds so just a note to say it will move with constant acceleration and part d in reality the string is not light state how this would affect the working in part b so the reason we use the model the modeling assumption that a string is light is so the tension is the same in both parts of the string so if it wasn't light the tension would not be the same in both parts of the string.